Um, mm. So we're going to continue. Let's continue on this particular subject, man. But first of all, to the brothers and sisters, Shabbat Shalom. Send that salam. Ene ras yadinos tefarine, otherwise known as Wendem Yadon, of the Lion of Judah, Society of His Imperial Majesty. Now, I've been looking for a particular speech of His Majesty, a particular word sound utterance. And we know that our Father is a wonderful counselor, and He has given us much counsel about so many realities of this of this life, of this world, and the world to come. I and I, Father, Kedamawi, Haila, Selassie. All right? Now, the particular speech, the particular word sound of his imperial majesty is that Ethiopia, speaking of biblical and holy covenant Ethiopia, not the present um, secular dispensation that we're going through, but true Ethiopia, Ethiopia of the thousand plus, three thousand plus years, and Ethiopia of the true millennia and the kingdom of Christ, the kingdom of the Lord to come, you know what I'm saying, has only maintained her freedom, or he may have said independence, if I'm correct, by her faith and her force of arms. Now, why is this so important? Well, because you have ones who are trying to take the teachings of his imperial majesty and distort them. Because his majesty's wisdom inspired the whole world and all that dwelt in the world. But you see, there's many children of the devil, children of the evil doers. So they will hear this wisdom and this truth, and they will use it for their own secular and ungodly and antichrist purposes. So now you hear about um, disarmament of individuals. Instead of the nations disarming, we are now taught that because of these present, like, massacres and these, these shootings like Columbine and, and, and Virginia Tech and um, per, the, the present one, the Batman thing, the Dark Knight, Lucifer, Rise, the Lucifer Rising. You know, you can make that connection when the movie was shown, what day it was on. This is 719 into 720, and 720 is the second cipher of the circle. So we have the first is 360, add 360 to 360, two ciphers. It makes what? It makes 720. So whether that has anything to do with what's really behind this, the ones will say this is a lone wolf. It's a lone wolf, which many people believe was a sheep. Why? Because people have been worshiping the image of the beast. So this particular um, individual who has killed and maimed so many, for lack of a better word, innocent people, you know what I'm saying, who went to watch a movie, Batman Rise, we could get into why they're into the movie and what the movie really contains, so and so on, but the, the basic point is that many innocent, non-combatant people, you know what I'm saying, were, were killed, were murdered, so forth and so on, and now you have this devil's advocacy where they're acting like, well, we don't know how this could be. He is such an intelligent person. He had no criminal record, so forth and so on. But both you and I, speaking to the brothers and sisters in Christ, you and I know that there's more to this. There's so much more to it. And much of it is going to be exposed as time goes on. But let's look at the, the, the past incident. And we mentioned this in the first part um, video that we, that we just recorded um, a couple of maybe maybe an hour or so ago, and hopefully we'll post up before this one, where we were talking about um, Michael Moore, the, the writer of um, Stupid White Men. You understand? Um, he did the, the, the movie Bowling for Columbine. But then there's also a documentary by a, um, a, a, a Christian, um, American Christian group called Cross TV, and they did um, a documentary series, four-part series called... Um, they sold their souls for rock and roll. And what was interesting about that particular um, documentary, we, we, we really found out that behind the, the, the killings in Columbine was a very clear antichrist agenda, a very clear antichrist agenda. In fact, a lot of the, the, the boys and girls who were killed, they were known to be outwardly Christian. 
They were known to believe in Jesus Christ. Now, whether they knew the true humanity of Jesus Christ as the woolly-haired um, Ethiopian black man, as the catacombs of Rome and all ancient witnesses verify, and even the black Madonna is another verification that Christ was Afro-Shemitic or black or Ethiopian, like Tacitus, the Roman historian, said circa 70 AD, that the Israelites were of the Ethiopian problem or of the race of the Ethiopian. So whether these particular um, victims of the Columbine incident knew that or not, they basically were seeking to live at least according to, you know, the principles of Christ, you know what I'm saying, not the principles of the world, and they were sing singled out and targeted. Most of this has not gotten into the popular media. So therefore, people are still saying, we don't know why, why these particular victims were chosen, so forth and so on, above other people. No, we do know. The evidence is out there, you know what I'm saying? But the media, of course, the mass media, the massacre media, and you notice how wherever the carcass is, like Christ teaches in um, Matthew's gospel, says that wherever the carcass is, there will you have the vultures. So wherever the death and carnage and destruction, they all hover around these stories, but they're not really revealing what they know is the truth because it is not PC. It is not politically correct, and how will this weigh in on that political thing and that particular agenda or this or that and so forth and so on. But His Majesty's teaching, the teaching of His Imperial Majesty, might be in, actually in this book, the teaching of His Imperial Majesty actually provides us with a true context to the matter of where do we stand. So they're not talking about disarming the nations that have nuclear weapons. You hear about the Iran thing, Iran, Iran, he ran, she ran, I ran. You remember in school? Iran, he ran, she ran, I ran. Yeah. Well, they're talking about Iran. They say Iran has nuclear weapons, and Iran and Israel is going to use these weapons against the so-called modern um, European Jewish state of Israel, blah, blah, rare, rare, so forth and so on. So we, we can't allow Iran to get nuclear weapons because if Iran gets nuclear weapons, where will we? Oh, my goodness. And now they're trying to disarm people in America. You understand? Instead of regulating the arms, notice how this, this guy, you understand, he was able within about three months' space of time Notice this, in a three-month space of time, he was able to, to, to assemble a whole arsenal for $3,000. I mean, ballistic helmet, um, ballistic um, other sort of bulletproof um, body armor, they call it, um, all the rounds and ammunition, so forth and so on. And 2020 did something pretty interesting. But it had Philip Zimbardo. We mentioned this before, but it, it deserves being mentioned again. Speaking about heroes and how African Americans or blacks in America are eight times more likely to be Herus or Horuses or, or heroes. That's where the word hero comes from, Horus of ancient Egypt. But we'll, we'll, we'll rest that point as well. But how they're eight times more likely than European or Caucasian. Americans to be heroes, as well as Hispanic males, are very likely, I think four times or so was, was based on their survey and research. They've done a whole research. Now, Philip Zimbardo, he knows what he's talking about. He, he's done a whole psychological series that we watched when we was growing up years ago. It was on PBS. Um, I think it was called Psychology. And they had different parts where he dealt with different aspects. It was like one of those um, teaching tools and everything, using the media and using videos in the classroom, so forth and so on. It's a wonderful series. Um, we have a for educational copy as well, and it's out there if you go to PBS and, and the Annenberg. I think Annenberg was the Annenberg Society or Annenberg, um, blah, blah, blah. They're, they're, they're responsible for that. But anyway, he did this um, one particular research of his was, taught, was, was called the Lucifer Effect. Now, how interesting that there's the Lucifer effect and there's this whole antichrist doctrine and philosophy that many people believe in. You understand? Many even youths, remember what happened. They suppress God in the classroom. You understand? In other words, any talk about God, any talk about the Bible, 
You know what I'm saying? They brought up evolutionism, which is another religion. Evolution, Darwin, the chimp god, that's a whole other religion right there. Planet of the Apes, that's a whole other religion. Believe it or not, it's a whole other religion. There's a whole racial, there's a whole racial undertone to this. Now, some will say, well, are you saying that this was a racial incident, that he was targeting black people? No. We're not saying that he was just targeting black people or just targeting white people. What we're saying is this, how interesting that this guy with the Dark Knight thing, there's a lot of similarity to that guy up there in the, in the Nordic European countries, that Bregovic, you know what I'm saying, who is a very clear and, and, and known so-called neo-Nazi. Well, a lot of Americans haven't picked up unless they've been watching the BBC and Deutsche Welle, like some of us, is that in Germany, they have a situation where for the past maybe decade or more, there's been a lot of racist attack by so-called neo or new age Nazis against Ethiopians, against um, black Africans, against um, others from Africa and Asia in Europe. And these things have gone under the radar or they've been purposely suppressed. Now it's been blown up with this most recent um, Bregovic and the killings of all those people, liberals, blah, 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 that's been going on. Now they're looking into this, and they found that the police commissioner in Germany, he resigned because he found that the police were running cover for these neo-Nazi groups, you understand, who are very incensed and radicalized because their former enslaved, colonized peoples are coming right into their homeland and, in their opinion, taking over. You know, they're coming into it as refugees, so forth and so on. Well, how ironic it is. You know what I mean? I mean, just think about what happened in America. Then they say that America has more violence, violent killings, you understand, than 22 of the richest nations in the world. And this means the majority of the European or European allied, Asian and, and, and maybe some South American, I think it's mostly Asian and European nations, but America and Canada, of course, has more violence than the 22 nations combined. That means if we look at the murder rate in America, it is higher than 22 of the richest nations, which are as rich or some of them even richer, you know, per capita than America it has more violence. And they're saying, why is this? And they all have many of these other countries. They have there's no problem with guns. You know, they have no problem getting guns or having guns or going shooting or going hunting and going to the range or people having a gun or two or a rifle or two in their house. Nobody's stopping and frisking these people, so forth and so on. So why is it more so in America? And, 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 and all the expert coach, the experts, they're like, we don't know why this is going on. More studies need to be done. We don't know. Well, Michael Moore needs to be credited here. Michael Moore's Bowling for Columbine, do you remember that cartoon? I don't know if we can even post it. They might tell us that we're violating somebody's copyrights or whatever like that, even though it's fair use and the stand for doctrine. They might tell us the violation of copyright. But you probably can see it out there, the Bowling for Columbine um, cartoon. It explained it all. It explained it all in that. Now, we're in New York, in the New York area. Now, in the New York, you know, tri-state New York area, we have um, – Michael Bloomberg, some call him like Doomberg or Dr. Doom, you remember in some of those Marvel comics, I think it's X-Men movies or something like that. And remember, this is the guy, right? This is the, the, the Jewish guy that basically was able to twist, you understand, the legal system, you understand, so that he can actually get re-elected even beyond his term, the term limits thing. He was able to manipulate that, some say, because the money, capital, friends in high places. But his agenda right now in the New York area, you probably heard about this if you live in other parts of the country or other parts of the world, that there's this whole stop and frisk thing going on where black people, black males in particular, have been profiled. Because what they say is there's a lot of black on black violence and crime, so forth and so on, and drugs and everything else. But have you forgotten about COINTELPRO? You remember COINTELPRO at the end of the Malcolm X movie 
um, the Spike Lee movie. At the end of it, you remember when they're on the boat with the, with, with the, the mobsters, with the gangsters, the real gangsters, not the innocent wangsters, but the real gangsters, and they're meeting with the mob to give them, like, the government's giving them license to bring in drugs, to bring in guns, to, to, to flood the ghetto, to flood the black majority, black areas, the, the, the places now that are being gentrified. Now white folks, Asians, and others can move into these particular areas, you know what I'm saying? Because these areas have been so hard hit and devastated, you know, by the crack generation, by the so-called war on drugs, and, and by, by heroin from before, it was the heroin thing, rah, rah, rear, rear. But, but, but think about this. We're, I mean, you'll probably know that other teachers and a lot of these black teachers and others who've been testifying, some of their videos are on the YouTubes out there, you know, and you might have seen it. They were going through, some of them going, went and researched this and laid out the majority of the facts. And this is one thing I want to put in right here, in this particular book right here, because they really want to stop drugs, right? You see this right here? Has the cure, has the cure for addiction been suppressed since the 60s? Yes, it has. Has the cure for addiction been suppressed since the 60s? This is about ibogaine. The Ibo game story. I don't know if you can find this out there. You know what I'm saying? Dana Beal and company. You know, I, I, I met this guy right here. You know, um, you know, European. You can say white boy, but he had a good, a really good idea. This is a Staten Island project. Let's just show you the back of it, and showing how Africa, you know, some of the Europeans, some of the white folks, you know, have really recognized, you know, more of the reality, and they've taken a stand against the other white folks. So what you're getting now is a blowback. You're getting some of these white folks who are really blaming other white folks for the fact that black people and immigrants and others are being able to rise up and in a freer or fairer balance of things. You know, you know with everything being leveled, they're noticing that a lot of these other people who their racist philosophy over the past 400 years for these people was, were, were, were in, 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 in inferior were were not able to attain like somehow white people were somehow special by some um you know they had uh, uh some what they, what they, they make they make a lot of kind of philosophies but a lot of these philosophies have been proven you know to be false to be faulty so now what they do is they take the bible out of the classroom because folks have been recognizing well from all the evidence Christ is really black. And so if the Bible stayed in the classroom, therefore, not only the teachings of Christ, but Christ's humanity would have been taught. This was very dangerous for them, so they had to remove that. But there's a bigger picture. You understand? And we're studying Torah right now. We're about to get into Phineas. Phineas, the 41st Torah portion. We just completed um, the 40th with the Balak. Balak and Balan. Balaam. And in that particular portion, we talked about how um, Balaam was a, a, a sorcerer, and he was hired um, by Balak, who was an a, a enemy king, to stop the rise of the black Messiah. Okay, to stop the rise of the Beta Israel, to stop the rise of Israel, because they were, they were achieving too many victories. But if you know the story, basically, he couldn't curse them because... Um, Jah, God, the Lord God of Israel, you know what I'm saying, who was above even the sorcery and witchcraft people, they, they have to get permission like Satan. Remember Satan in the book of Job? Satan couldn't just do whatever he, he, he wanted to do. He had to like go to the court, you know, go to the heavenly court, and he had to get a warrant. He had to get a warrant before the Almighty in order to do this, this, this. And the Almighty said, well, you can do this, but you can't do this, so forth and so on. You know, and this is, this is a very important teaching even on that particular um. Um, um, Bible story and, and teaching that really hasn't been taught properly. I want to show you something in this book. There's a whole lot in this book. I mean, there's a, there's a real, you know, um, marijuana as medication, um, healing herb or narcotic. It just breaks down so much. If you can get your hands on this particular book, um, please do. Okay, here we go right here. This is Edgar, 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 Right, J. Hoover's, right, this is, this is the letter right here from Edgar J. Hoover. Let's see if we can get a little bit of light. Let's get some, let's get some light on this. Okay, there we go. Excuse me. Let's get some light on this. You see this right here? This is Edgar J. Hoover, 
you can see this is this is a, a photo stat of the COINTEL Pro. Now people say with well, the COINTEL operation now we're just in the sixties. Really, you think so? You think that's how the government moved? Huh? You think that that's how no. Too much attention was gotten. And so what they did was just change names. It's almost like how the Batman movie, right? And you know, the Batman movie that's out right now.